The Cumbahee Batik on Silk was created in 1999 and is 53 inches by 53 inches. This is my first large scale oil painting, eight feet by nine feet, a triptych, and the first oil to use a batik as inspiration. Luscious colors and contemporary mediums are available now, moving painters to new futures. History, science, and emotion come out in these new developments. The Smithsonian National Gallery tasked Gamblin Artist Colors to modernize historical paints. There, our conservation colors had been used on Van Gogh's and Da Vinci's. As a color house, they're the bomb. I'm a fan of their radiant paints, which warm up and cool down colors without darkening. These were developed with the vibrant palette of artist Wolf Kahn. Check him out. <laughs> At first, the pigment is ground in oil and the artist paints had to be produced each day. Many were highly toxic, containing lead, mercury, chrome, arsenic, and cyanide. Plants, stones, minerals, fish, and other sources are largely replaced today by man-made pigments more permanent to light and air and less dangerous. Brushes today include red sable, weasel hair, ox hair, pig, hog, boar hair, and synthetics. century Northern Europeans experimented with oil painting on panels. This flexible medium can be thick impasto or fine detail, luminous highlights or dark shadows, hard or soft edged, abstract or realistic, tonal or colorful. I can see the brush sort of bending over. Yeah, down. you can see it. 
really doing the job of a brush. So now I'm at the point in the painting which I call Search and Destroy. I think what I have to do next is up here where it's violet, right up there, I've got to accentuate that line where the ocean and the sky come together. And then down here where I got a little radical yesterday, I need to incorporate the foreground, which is nice and abstract with what I've got going here. So that is today's work. Search and destroy. In the final stages of painting Kambahi, I'm just reacting to the buttery application of color. I look at every area and where my eye stops, the palette knife or brush carries you to the next mark. It's an internal dialogue between the brain and the hand until there's a flow which continues throughout the design.
that's a good signature. Duct tape is the answer to everything. Duct tape. <laughs> hey, I'm having a beautiful afternoon. Got a nice setup. I'll show you later. This is the office for a paper. Pretty nice, huh? Got my brushes ready. Got my paint ready. Got a great scene to paint. This is a fleet on the back of the waist. Deweese is a pristine barrier island 11 miles north of Charleston. You get there by ferry or boat to private residence and a wildlife preserve. Ninety-four percent of the 1,200-acre island is protected by the Conservancy. And you can go to the Nature Center, which is where I did two paintings. The fragility of this living ecosystem is all around me. One hurricane can alter this swamp. When you paint outside here in the wetlands, you have to look out for snakes and alligators. Ants and mosquitoes, all bugs are a constant menace.
Plain air painting began to thrive when tin tubes replaced pig bladders, enabling artists to leave their studios. With pig bladders, the artist had to poke a hole for the oil to come out. The Impressionist of the 1800s could convey stunning colors of life pulsating around them when the tin tubes were invented. John G. Rand was the American inventor of the collapsible tube. It had long shelf life, did not leak, and could be sealed with a cap. For the first time in history, it was possible to finish a painting on site. The colors were new, chrome, yellow, emerald, green. Value is the lightest or darkest of a color. Hue is the name of a color. Chrome is how pure, intense, and saturated the color is.